word Miracle Church International started in Tamale, the capital of the northern region of Ghana, 20 years ago. It started with a crusade at the police park. The first Sunday after the crusade, 68 people came to fellowship with World Miracle Assembly as it was then known. Starting from a very difficult terrain, as the people in this region are predominantly Muslims, God has been faithful with His Word and has established the Word Miracle Church International. It is a spiritual force to reckon with in Ghana. Within 20 years, the founder of the church has preached the gospel, led many souls to Christ, and brought God's healing power to many people in 49 nations. The church has been established in six countries. Within Ghana, there are multitudes of people in the church. The founder of the Word Miracle Church International is Bishop Charles Ajinosari. When I gave my life to the Lord, uh, two weeks later, I sensed the call to preach. And so the call was so strong that I gave God some conditions. And by the following day, he had fulfilled those conditions. So I started preparing myself to be a preacher. And in 1986, whilst in the All Nations for Christ Bible Institute in Nigeria for Bible College, God impressed on my heart to finally go start a church in Tamale. And so I went and did that. I had lived in Tamale before. And I was very notorious in the area where I lived, the Zogbeli area. The guys in the area knew me to be a very rowdy, sinful, lustful, troublesome guy, young man. And uh, God wanted the people who knew me, I believe, to have a testimony that when he saves, he saves to the uttermost. I believe that's why God sent me to the north. And secondly, I also believe that he wanted to teach me, that was my wilderness experience, how to believe God in the midst of nothing because we went to start church in tamale without any support from anywhere and from there god took me to 16 nations of the world in fact it was an opportunity for god to show me how to totally trust him and it prepared me for my ministry later on the church started in tamale as time went on they, they started believing in what we were doing, people were being converted. So they knew that God's hand was upon the young people who have come to town. I started with very few who were already Christians. And so we had to start from the scratch, training people how to be Christians and how to walk this walk. Then I was teaching at a school. And my husband was not on any salary. I had to feed the home. There were pastors, about three pastors with us at the same place. So I had to cater for all the people around the place, the house. So it was a bit of challenge. This work that the bishop founded in the north, you know the north is a very strong place where finances are not there, you know, and you just enter into ministry. You came out of the university, enter into ministry. In fact, at the time, there were a lot of us who were in the mission house with the bishop uh, because uh, as an apostle, uh, he was preparing a lot of people for this great work. So he opened up his residence for a lot of us to come there, okay? And uh, finances were not there, but then we were joyful, working joyfully because we believe God had called us and we believe that tomorrow it's going to be good. We didn't have any place to worship on one particular Sunday and we were forced to worship under a tree until during one of our miracle services. The CEO of the uh, Tamale Ketrera's house happened to visit the miracle, attend the miracle service. And he said that following Sunday, we should move bag and baggage and come to the Ketrera's house and use that place as our place of worship. In 1992, I was having a meeting in New York when I sensed God saying to me, go to Accra by showing me what to do when we came to Accra by holding miracle services every month. I brushed it aside because uh, I didn't want to come. I felt that there were not many preachers in the north. 
So I wanted to be in the north. And also there were too many giants in Accra. I didn't want to come and join them. But by 1994, God had made it so clear, but he used the Konkoma Nanumba War, which brought a curfew to Tamale, also made it difficult for us to go to church. And looking at the ministry, if that was our headquarters, we couldn't meet, we couldn't sustain the work, then I needed to obey God. So I had to follow up and move to Accra so that we can support the work. Starting in Tamale has really helped the Word Miracle Church International um, because it made us to totally trust in God and not in the arm of flesh. It also helped us raise our first group of pastors who have become the pillars in the organization. And they had to go through the mill in the north with us so that they will understand what it is to trust God. I think it has been a very good experience for the church. My personal testimony. Well, over the years, God has taken me through a lot of things and um, He has taught me a lot of things concerning ministry and He has given me things that He wants me to do. And um, I feel God has been good to me. <laughs> Every step of the way has been a miracle. I've seen many mountains and valleys, but through it all, God has shown himself strong. And uh, we have come thus far by the grace of God. Um, I would say that my story can be summed up in a song Jimmy Swaggart sings, I owe it all to Jesus. Um, whatever we have achieved in these 20 years, I think simply I would say we owe it all to Jesus. And that is my, my song and my testimony. The secret has been dependence on God. Um, when I talk about dependence on God, I mean we have trusted God every step of the way by being very prayerful. I believe that I don't have the other abilities and gifts so many other people have. But one gift I have is to pray. And so I pray quite a bit and the church has learned to pray for everything we need. And God has answered every step of the way. I've seen a lot of miracles. But one miracle that overwhelmed me was at the Indian Crusade, the Bangalore. You know, there was a mother who brought three of her children to the crusade ground. They were all deaf and dumb. And after prayer, all of them could hear and speak. That was what beat my mind, what God could do. It's one of the things that God called me to do, to bring his healing power to my generation. And so as I preach the word, God confirms it with signs and wonders following. My emphasis is the word. But when the word is preached, surprisingly, God confirms it with the miracles. He is a, a strict man, a principled man. He loves the Lord. And he would, he would take God first above everything. So that, that's my husband. I wouldn't have come this far without the help of my wife. I call it a privilege. You know, I, I don't deserve what God has done over the years. So I call it a privilege. He is a responsible man. He's caring, he's loving, he loves the family as well as the church. In the short term, we want to put a church everywhere there's no church in Ghana. We want to try to bring the gospel to every group of people God will open the door for us to minister to across the world to at least hear the gospel once in their lifetime. We want to also start schools and clinics in various places that we have designated. We want to raise strong pastors and uh, Christian leaders who will impact this generation. We are believing 
to have a, a training college to raise teachers to not only go and teach secular things, but also be able to influence the lives of young men and women for good. The church is marching on, and the church is marching on, and the gates of hell shall never prevail, and the church is marching on. That's our church. We are marching on. I mean, nothing can stop us. With Bishop ahead of us, we will reach there.